Welcome to lesson number six. We're going to continue talking about uh, factoring polynomial expressions. Now, on the uh, at the beginning of this lesson, we kind of talked about uh, we talked about we continued talking about the rational zero theorem, and um, we talked about it when we have a uh, a leading term or a leading coefficient that is greater than one, and and just what the implications are then, and then what we what we introduce you to is. Uh, where we have the uh, the leading coefficient and the constant term, if we look for factors of both of those, those are going to end up being our our zeros in fractional form. And what I mean by that is, in this example here, I'll show you that where we have the polynomial p of x is equal to 5x cubed minus 51x squared plus 55x minus 9. I have my my uh, leading coefficient and I also have my constant term so I have 5 as my leading coefficient and my uh, constant term of 9. Now all we, all we do is we take our constant term first so negative 9 and we factor that and, and uh, when we factor that we just look for the factors that go into negative 9 so plus and minus 1 plus and minus 3 plus and minus 9 and we attribute that to the value of p and with the leading coefficient of 5, we um, take the factors of 5, so plus and minus 1, plus and minus 5, and we are going to attribute those to the values of q, the potential zeros of q. And when we're looking for the, fa the potential zeros of the term, it becomes p over q, and so plus and minus 1, plus and minus 3, plus and minus 9, over q, which is plus or minus one, plus or minus five, and so then the potential zeros. If we if we uh, add up all these terms or um, the combinations of terms, we have one and one, or one and negative one, one and three, one and nine. We have three and five, and we also have nine over five. So in this in this example, we want to consider this this function, the one we looked at above. And we want to use the potential zeros above to list the potential binomial factors. All right, so if I'm looking at plus and minus 1, and then the potential binomial factors is going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. If I'm working with plus and minus 3, it's going to be x plus 3 and x minus 3. x plus 9, x minus 9. One-fifth would be 5x plus 1 and 5x minus 1. 3 fifths would be 5x plus 3 and 5x minus 3. And then finally 5x plus 9 and 5x minus 9. Now what we want to do is show that x equals 1 is a 0 of p of x and then determine all the other zeros of p of x. So if I'm trying to prove that x equals 1 is a 0 then I could do it either two ways. I could use my rational zero theorem, plug it into p of x, or I could just, um, if I'm x equals 1, or I could find uh, the synthetic division of the problem. So 5 minus 51 plus 55 minus 9. Bring down the 5. 51, negative 51 plus 5 will be negative 46. Negative 46. Uh, plus 55, we would have positive 9. 9 minus 9 would be 0. That's my remainder of 0, and so that means that x equals 1, or x minus 1, is a factor. And uh, we could rewrite this then as p of x is equal to x minus 1 times 5x squared minus 46x plus 9. <clears throat> and uh, the next thing we could do is we could we could find out what uh, what the factors of 5x squared minus 46x plus 9 are, and uh, we already know that x minus 1 is one of the factors, but we could break down this term here. And so let's we're gonna have to use uh, some of the the problems that we were looking at in um, pre-calculus 11 to actually factor this, right? If we have a coefficient that's greater than one then the, uh, the way we would solve that is what multiplies to give us 45 but adds to give us negative 46. All right, so multiplies to give us 
um, 45, positive 45, but adds to give us negative 46. And so if I'm looking at 45 and 1, negative 45 and negative 1, negative 45 plus negative 1 would give us negative 46 and 45. And so the next thing we do is we, we group them, right? And if I'm grouping them, then I'm probably going to want to, uh, let's see here, I want to put the 45 over here, so minus 45x, minus x plus 9, x minus 1, and I can take 5x out of both of these terms, and so 5x, x minus 9, and I'll take out negative 1 from this term, negative 1, x minus 9, and so the factors I'm left with are x minus 1, 5x minus 1, and x minus 9. And those also happen to be my, my zeros, right? I had uh, x minus 1, 5x minus 1, so this one, and x minus 9, this one, and this one. Those are all my factors, which means that my zeros, and my zeros are then going to be x equals positive 1, x equals 1 fifth, and x equals positive 9. Um, the last thing we want to do, well actually we just did that, we solved the above expression right there and that's all we had to put there. And this question is exactly the same, uh, the only difference is we're going to be working with a synthetic division of three halves and that's just going to be what you did in lesson, lesson number four, the end of lesson four and a little bit in lesson five.